Okay. This video gives me anxiety, I will be honest with you. It is finally the time where I sit down and tell you what my favorite books of 2021 were. And I'll tell you why I find this particularly dreadful. In 2020, I read, I think, seven or eight books, um, which felt like a lot for me because the years prior to that were probably one, two, or zero. And this year, thanks to BookTube, a lot of bookish friends from this platform on Instagram, just so many amazing, inspiring individuals that really just got me into reading and just introduced me to so many amazing authors. I read eventually 38 books um, in 2021, which is crazy for me. Like to go from seven or eight books to 38 books is a lot. It's about quality and not about quantity, but just it shows that I really fell into this beautiful journey of reading this year, this past year. Um, and to put my favorite 10 or something is just so ridiculous to me. Just for reference, this year I read my first Cusk, Ferrante, Levy, Ginsburg, Moshfag, Ali Smith. Those are huge um, literary voices to come in contact with and to have con like, to have started reading all of those people, all of those amazing women this year, like how am I to narrow this list down? I don't think I can put them in a particular order, although probably towards the end I could tell you what like my top three were, like the three that stand out specifically in my head. So the first two books I wanna talk about take you back to when I first started reading in 2021, and then the second book is sort of how my taste shifted. So I'm starting with Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer, because this is the book that really got me back into reading. Like, this book, I still think this is a perfect novel. I just think that everything about this book is done so well, and is just, it's just perfect in itself. I don't think it would be for everyone in terms of the style and the, you know, it's it's a sci-fi. It's about this expedition um, that goes into an area called Area X, um, which is sort of a pristine wilderness. These five women from different fields are going in to Area X to kind of take note of what's going on there and report back to this government agency called the Southern Reach. Although I don't read very much sci-fi anymore, um, I do think that this series and Jeff Vandermeer is a standalone, like, branch of sci-fi that I think is so well done, is so smart, is so layered. I, think, I feel it's better you don't know too much. Um, it's a short book, talks a lot about environment and how we interact with the natural world. Um, yeah, it's just so good. So then I want to move to the next book, which is Outline by Rachel Cusk. Rachel Cusk, I would say, is probably... I haven't read her in a while because I sh her books were sort of towards the beginning of the year for me, but I think I can safely say that she is probably my top author of the year. Coming from Annihilation, at some point I encountered Outline and it totally shifted my reading taste. It sort of opened that gate for like thinky, brainy, plotless books about women moving through the world outline is a classic in that sense. I have to take this off because it's so hot in here. Okay, the energy in this video is very frantic. I think it's also because I haven't eaten anything today and I'm like oh, feeling crazy. I have such a hard time to do this video and to talk about, where's my notebook? And to talk about 
all of these books and when I get into trying to explain them or explain why they're my favorite, I just feel like it gets so long, so drawn out, and it's also really difficult for me. I feel like it's better that I tell you the books than to not upload this video at all, but I probably won't be able to give you a lot of information about each one. Any reading vlogs I have, I'll link them below, and if, I don't know, you can do your research. So Outline, we loved it. It really solidified something in a shift in my reading taste that opened this like Pandora's box, and... Yeah, now I'm here. I love it. So, I loved Assembly by Natasha Brown. This was amazing. Debut novel. I'm really excited to see what she writes in the future. Short book. A lot going on in there. What it means to be a black woman in Britain, specifically. And in the workplace, in her relationship. She meets the family of her white partner. Race, class. Uh, sexism. Just very, very good. A very highlightable book. Next, I have Autumn by Ali Smith. I loved reading my first Ali Smith. I thought that it was brilliant. I love that it's thinky and brainy, but very art heavy. It's very art influenced, and I love that. It felt like if an art history, like an art historian, wrote a dreamy Brexit novel. That's that's what it is. <laughs> Excited to read more Ali Smith. I just bought Winter yesterday, so I'm gonna start that soon. Um, but I'm definitely intrigued by her, and I had such a good reading experience with this book. Um, the Pixels of Paul Cezanne and Reflections on Other Artists by Vin Vendors, speaking about art books. Vin Vendors is um, a filmmaker, and he just writes essays in this that are kind of either dedicated to or in response to other artists that he likes. For example, Pina Bausch, Peter Lindbergh, Yoji Yamamoto, uh, paintings of Andrew Wyeth. So I just thought that this was so good. Um, it's so, so my kind of book. What it means to look at art, to make art. Yeah, I, I also just like when an artist that I'm really inspired by um, writes reflections on artists that they really appreciate and talking about what they think is special about that person, they do things, what comes through in their art, in their form, so I just, yeah, I really, really loved this and it's a book that I'll come back to um, a lot, I think. Next we have Freshwater by Akweke Amezi. Quick Amezi is a Nigerian non-binary author. They are amazing. I, this is the only book of theirs that I've read. Um, and it was just one of the most unique things that I've ever come across. They have such an interesting perspective and way of blending a lot of things into their writing. Like Nigerian folklore, if I can say that. A spirituality from Nigerian culture mixed with being a non-binary person in the world. I thought that this novel was incredible. It's not the easiest thing to read, it's like very challenging, um, but just so unique that there's no way that it's not my favorite. And as someone also who is interested in gender, in the non-binary perspective, I just ate that shit up. It was so good. Next, I've got The Lost Daughter by Elena Ferrante. I read a few Ferrantes this year, this being my favorite. I also think that this book is just perfect. Like, I remember reading it and finishing it. Also, it's dog-eared, like, on every other page. This was my introduction to Ferrante. I did also just recently see the film adaptation, which was really beautiful. I just remember thinking, Wow, what a perfect little book. It just, I didn't, I couldn't think of anything that I would want to be different. This follows a mother named Leda who is kind of taking a break from her work and her kids to take herself on a seaside vacation and is just troubled with all of her feelings about motherhood, about being a mother, while she's sort of observing 
another family and another young mom in the same beach location. How that triggers her to see this relationship between this other mother and Nina with her daughter and yeah, it, looking at the maybe perspective of a mother that we don't normally read, that we're not really fed um, in the media and, you know, just in society. Um, so I really appreciate this perspective. I just think this, this is so good. Okay, now we got to the book that I think is my favorite book of the whole year, which is Second Place by Rachel Cusk book that I singularly think about the most. Um, I have images from that book in my dreams. They come to me during the day while I'm just living my life. I'll be eating and like all of a sudden be thinking about passages from that book. So I just, I really, 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 really loved this book. If aspects of outline um, don't call to you or just not or less your thing, but you're interested in Cusk, I would recommend to pick up second place. There's just so much going on in everything that she writes. Like, I feel like it's so layered and you're getting the kind of storyline, but there's so many curtains to be lifted behind and like she's making comments on the relationship between men and women and misogyny and a lot about being observed, being observed by men, the male gaze, what it means to create art. Um, it's like a, they're a couple that live on this marsh and they have a, a place which, which they call the second place, which is where they invite artists to come and do residencies. So she um, invites this male painter that she wants to paint the surroundings, but also she really wants to be painted by him, like for her to be painted by him. And yeah, it doesn't go as she wants it to. And there's just sort of like a major unraveling um, of self, of identity, the situation. Yeah, it's just so good. It's so good. It's a book that I would love to reread. Then we've got to Deborah Levy. Um, and I chose out of her nonfiction and fiction that I read this year, which both I loved, um, I am going to choose Swimming Home, which is a novel. This is also one of those books when I first, um, cyberly met Rebecca from Rebecca Eats Books. She was reading it and so I picked it up, obviously, as you do. And it was brilliant. It's similar to The Lost Daughter. It has a very um, cinematic feel to it. Like I could definitely see it being a film. That book has tension, a lot of tension. I just remember thinking like, wow, books are so good. Books are so good and people can do such amazing things with words and how privileged we are to open it and to read it. It's another one that if you just want good writing and a sort of that feeling like something is not right, like we're on the edge of disaster <laughs> and following like kind of a cast of characters. It's place in a kind of vacation home, like a chateau or sort of thing. Villa, a villa, it's short. You don't need to know a lot before going in, um, but I thought it was brilliant. Then we've got one of my other favorite authors this year, which just really, really touched me. And I feel like I could have also included um, a novel of hers, but I decided to go with her essay collection I read this year, which is uh, The Little Virtues by Natalia Ginsberg. Natalia Ginsberg is an Italian author. So beautiful, just beautiful, beautiful writing, but so clear and clean and cutting. She just writes well and she writes about life and almost the pace in which you know life functions like, but with these really smart, interesting perceptions. And you know, she can kind of write about shoes, but you could cry about how she just describes 
some relationship she has with shoes and how that reflects something about family life or relationships or childhood. Everyone should read a Ginsburg. <laughs> if you have not, make 2022 your year. I will definitely be reading more of hers. I honorable mention to her novella, The Dry Heart, which I thought was also amazing. But I think I was really moved and touched by The Little Virtues, so I choose that one. Then we've got another fave, um, an introduction to this author this year, Otessa Moshfeg. I know we've got a lot of Moshfegian fans um, on this little corner of the booktube. Um, this is Death in Her Hands, the only one that I've read of hers. I have not read My Year of Western Relaxation, but I bought it for Ohad, my partner, um, in Hebrew. So maybe we will read it as a buddy read together and maybe make a video. I just enjoyed my reading experience of this so much that I didn't even vlog it. I, I didn't want to talk about it too much. I just wanted to sit and read this and I enjoyed it so much. And it was just like when I don't have to think too much or write things down, it was just an experience of, of reading a good book that grips you and you love the character as strange as she is. It follows this older woman that's living in secluded woods somewhere and she finds a note that there's a dead body, but there's no body. And so then she's kind of traveling, trying to find out um, what happened to this Magda that's been, that's dead somewhere. Really also going into her loneliness and her loss yeah, sort of just the deterioration of the mind. Very character book. Um, this is a character study, which I know Moshfeg does really, really well. Um, so I just, I know people said it's like her weirdest book. Um, but I loved it. I just really, really loved it. Next, we've got Blueberries by Elena Savage. Essays Concerning Understanding. We also have Rebecca Eats Books to thank for this because, yeah, she got everyone and their mom to read this book. For good reason. This is such an interesting memoir that plays with form and deals with a lot of interesting, important subjects. Specifically, um, sexual violence and trauma um, for me was really, really strong in this book felt her exploration of sexual assault and how it lingers, just how it affected her and affects a person, I just found so striking and well done. I mean, Elena Savage is a fucking smart, smart, smart lady. Just brilliant. It was like, wow, don't you want to have dinner with her, you know, and like, just have some wine and like, I just want to glean from her knowledge and her very intellectual, but really, really creative. So dealing a lot with um, colonialism and globalization, colonialism specifically in the Australian context, which was interesting for me to read. Well, she's talking about academia and privilege. It's just so good. Another reread. But Blueberries was also towards the beginning of 2021. And I just remember reading those essays, like highlighting so much, feeling like my brain was doing this, like I was in a really, really, really good lecture with a really great teacher who's personable, funny, interesting, cool, and super smart. Um, yeah. And the last one I want to talk about is Signs Preceding the End of the World by, by Yuri Herrera. I talked at length about this book. It's a novella. I just also think everyone should read this. I think it would be liked by a lot of people. Just beautiful, beautiful writing. Really interesting exploration of immigration um, and migration between borders, specifically between Mexico and the US. The experience of immigration, um, but through this very creative, almost, it read to me almost like, um, 
like a fable or like a myth. So good. I feel like I talked about it a lot, so I don't need to really talk about it more other than like you should read it. So I'm loving all the women. I'm also loving the queer voice. Definitely want to read more queer voices in 2022. Specifically non-binary perspective. Art, a lot about art and how art meets life. I thought I was gonna pick a top three, but I don't know if I can. I like them all so much. I think the ones that stay the most in my head are Second Place by Rachel Cusk, The Lost Daughter by Elena Ferrante, but all the rest are divine. I'm really glad I got that over with. I was really hoping to be like exempt from that. But hopefully this inspires you to pick up some of those books that you um, haven't read or I'm sure you've heard about because I feel like I'm just echoing other great people on this platform who are really influencing me to read these things. So I feel like it's like passing through me, but from other people. So yeah, anyways. Um, I thought to maybe do a separate video that looks at like my reading stats and, and you know, on Storygraph, it really breaks everything down really in an interesting way. You can follow me on Storygraph if you want. All of that will be downstairs. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.